Good morning. It's good to see all of you here today on this brisk Sunday morning. Uh, but it is warm in here and we certainly have uh, a warm family to worship with together. Be sure and get a bulletin if you did not get one on your way in this morning. I uh, do have some updates to share with you and some business matters to share with you. First of all, we announced last week that June Lamb suffered a fall. She did not suffer any uh, broken bones, but um, she is still very sore and recovering from, from that. Uh, Jack Brown uh, had a brief hospital stay uh, earlier this week. He is now at home, but um, Donna is now sick as well. So we want to remember both Jack and Donna uh, in our prayers. Uh, also, Lois had to take Jim to the ER last night. Uh, he is having some back disc uh, issues. Uh, of course, they uh, triaged him and sent him home and said he needed to follow up with his doctor first of this week. So uh, that's why they are not here today. Certainly, we want to be prayerful for uh, Jim. Sarah has asked for prayers for two individuals. First of all, Sarah has a friend named Sarah and uh, is requesting prayers on, on her behalf. She has uh, undergone an incident that uh, she needs prayers for. And then, um, as most of you know, Sarah is a nurse in labor and delivery and one of her patients named Ashley uh, lost a child this week um, in, uh, in labor and delivery, and so she has requested that we remember Ashley in our prayers. And then some of you may be familiar with the shooting in Antioch last week. An individual named Josh White was killed in that alteration. Uh, that is uh, a friend of Clay and Becca's. We want to remember Josh's wife, Taryn, uh, and that entire family as the memorial service for him is going to be Tuesday. Those are all of the prayer requests that I have been given. Is there anything else that we need to mention? John Michael. Um, Alan. Yes. John Michael. Um, Angie's uh, nephew, uh, John Michael Del Castillo, had a medical procedure uh, this week and faces another one first of this week. Um, he has been having gallstones and uh, they had to do a stopgap procedure earlier this week, but he is going to be having surgery for gallstones, uh, I think today, uh, if everything goes well. So, uh, John Michael Del Castillo. There's a congregational meeting after the worship service this morning. Everyone is uh, encouraged to stay for that. Also, per church policy, our midweek service on, uh, or the week of Thanksgiving, is on Tuesday. So you're going to want to make a note um, of that. I'll send out a phone tree message uh, as well. It's always good to have the Suttles with us today, and uh, Brian always does a great job leading our singing, so I'll turn the service over to him. Good morning. Today's first song is going to be O Worship the King. <clears throat> o Worship the King, all the words above. How firm 
unto the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Before the opening prayer today, we'll sing, He's My King. Thank you. 
my life for thee. <clears throat> I gave my life for thee. opportunity to gather around the table and take these emeralds thanking you and thanking Jesus for the sacrifice that he made to give his life upon the cross that we can have salvation and forgiveness of our sins. Father, as we take this bread, it represents his body hanging on the cross. We just pray that we will take it in a way that pleases you in our sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Father, again, we approach your throne humbly, thanking you for sending your son to this earth to live and die and show us how to live and die. 
We're so thankful for the sacrifice, Father, and he hung upon the cross suffering for our sins. A spear was thrust into his side, and out came blood and water. Father, this fruit of the vine represents that blood that he was shed on the cross for our sins. And we just pray that we'll take of it in a way of pleasing not sight until Jesus comes again. In Christ we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. Now let's give thanks for our blessings. <clears throat> our Father, we're the most blessed people in the world. We're blessed because we accept Jesus as our Savior. He has given us salvation and made possible forgiveness of our sins. We're thankful that we live in a country that we can come and worship you without fear. We thank you for our health, the measure of health that you've given us and is able to work and make a living for our families. Now, Father, on this, the first day of the week, we bring a portion of these blessings back that we've laid by in store to carry on the work of this congregation. We just pray, Father, we live cheerfully and liberally in a way that's pleasing our sight. To Christ we pray. Amen. songs before the uh, for his talk today. I wanted to, to focus in on three gifts that we can give back to God. First one would be the gift of worship. So uh, number 738 in the books, we will glorify the King of Kings. We'll talk about that. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Oh, 
Lord, I must not, cannot bear to let them go. Let me go and tell them, brother, turn and flee. Master, I would say them, here am I to me. Place 
where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And our second text for the morning from Romans 12. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So, from our text this morning, we see that the Magi brought gifts of, first of all, gold. Now, gold was a symbolic gift of the king, or a king. In 2 Samuel 8, verse 10, we read this. Toy sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toy. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, gold, and bronze. And so gold is a gift for a king. We don't typically bring gold to baby showers. Now, I do know that one gift that I was given as, as an infant was a U.S. bond. And that apparently stayed wherever it stayed. And I remember as a seven or eight or ten year old child, that bond came due. And I remember going to the bank and, and cashing that. And whatever was paid for back in 1973, when it matured, it was worth more than when it was first, first given to me. And so we can understand how, how gold money is an appropriate gift perhaps. And yet... This gift is so much more significant because the Magi, by giving this gift, are acknowledging that Jesus is a king. The Word of God doesn't explicitly tell us how they figured this out or why they knew this, but in Matthew 2, verse 1, the Magi ask this question, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? They knew who Jesus was. And they brought gifts appropriate, not necessarily for a baby shower, but certainly a gift that is appropriate for a king. Yet Jesus was not born in the palace. The palace in Bethlehem where Jesus was born was high on a hill overlooking the city. Jesus was not born there, but in a barn or perhaps a cave where the livestock were being kept. Nonetheless, these magi acknowledged Jesus as being a king. Herod recognized Jesus as a king to the point of trying to kill him. Herod was not a full Jew. Herod was Idumean. And as one without full claim to the kingship, he could have seen a full-blooded Jew as being a challenger to the throne. And so in the verses just prior to our reading for the morning, Herod called the Magi to determine from them the exact time and place that the star appeared, which is how he came to the determination to kill all the Hebrew boys under four years of age. But the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and Mary and, and told them to get up and to leave, to flee to Egypt and remain there because Herod was trying to destroy Jesus. Why? Because he was a king. Over three decades later, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, the Roman governor Pilate put a sign over the cross of Jesus saying, the king of the Jews. The Jews protested that. They went to Pilate and said, do not write the king of the Jews, but then he said, I am the king of the Jews. Now, Pilate was certainly not a brave man. Pilate was very much a politician. He did not have the moral character to stand against the people and make an unpopular decision. But it seems that Pilate had an understanding that Jesus was the King of the Jews because that is what he wrote and he refused to have it changed, even to please the people. 
which was the only reason Jesus was on the cross in the first place. Perhaps Pilate grasped even just a little bit the words of Jesus that his kingdom is not of this world. How amazing that one who was outside the Jewish faith might actually have had a better person, a, a better idea of the person and ministry of Jesus than the very people he came to. He came to his own and his own did not receive him, John tells us in John chapter 1. Truly the gift of gold was a strange gift, but it was a prophetic gift about who Jesus was and who this baby would become. And then the second gift, which is even more odd, is the gift of frankincense. Like the gift of gold, frankincense would not be on our list of things to bring to a baby shower. It was a gift that we would not consider to be suitable for a baby. And just like the gold, this gift would have been considered to be too extravagant to give to a baby. Not only was it too extravagant, but it just wasn't a suitable gift. Frankincense was commonly used by the priesthood. It was used in priestly ceremonies. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, frankincense is an aromic resin used in incense and perfumes and comes from slashing the bark of trees, the trees which produce it, and then allowing the resin to bleed out and to solidify. And then it would be removed from the bark of the tree or the trunk of the tree. Now, in one sense, we might understand this just a little bit. I remember, I remember the first time I smelled drift. Y'all know what drift is? Uh, I, I, was, I was a grown man before I ever heard of drift. Now, before you think that's a little ridiculous, understand when you go to the detergent aisle, you don't find drift. You have to go to the baby section to find drift. Now, I remember the first time I ever smelled it. It's like the most wonderful smelling thing on, on the, the planet, right? And, and in fact, here's a public service announcement. Y'all know Febreze? You know, the fabric refresher? They actually make a drift scent. Uh, and yes, I do know this, and yes, I do have this, right? Uh, and, and so it's like the most wonderful aromatic thing. And so from that standpoint, we might understand how frankincense would be an appropriate gift. But again, this is something that was used by the priests. And so it is a very symbolic gift that they would have given to Jesus. It was a gift that by its very nature speaks prophetically, declaring Jesus as a priest. This infant would later on go and forgive individuals. He would forgive sins in Judea. The book of Hebrews lists him not only a priest, but also a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Strange as this gift was from the Magi, it was declared Jesus to be a priest. And ultimately that is what Jesus would do. He would bridge the gap between man and God through his own sacrifice. And so we have the gift of gold that would remind us of our obligation to the Lord, to the church. It's been said that the purpose of giving is not to separate us from our money, but to keep our money from separating us from God. We have the gift of frankincense that reminds us of the importance of us giving of ourselves in, in worship. The, the songs that we sing that are offered up, the Word of God tells us, are a sweet aroma to God. And, and so we see and understand the gold. We see and we understand the frankincense. But there is a third gift, as odd as these first two were, there is a third gift that is even stranger. And it is the gift of myrrh. Now, this may be an image that is easier for the ladies to understand than, than the men, even though uh, co-ed baby showers have become more and more common. But, but 
Imagine this picture as we think about myrrh as a gift. I imagine being at a baby shower and there are the refreshments that are there and there are the gifts that are there and, and everyone is sitting in a circle and the expectant mother is opening these gifts and there's the cute little onesie with the bear on the front and, and then there's the draft that gets passed around so that everyone can take a hit off of it. And uh, then... The next gift is opened. And the entire room gasps as the mother opens the present and, and picks up the bottle and, and opens the bottle to discover embalming fluid as one of the gifts. Certainly an incredibly inappropriate gift for such an occasion. Everyone there is shocked, horrified, insulted, and perhaps even angered. It is a picture that is so outside the realm of an acceptable gift that we cannot even imagine such an insult. And as the Magi opened their gifts for the baby Jesus, they gave Him the gift of myrrh. And like frankincense, myrrh is expensive. And it is an aromatic resin from some of the shrubs that grow in the Middle East. It did have medicinal benefits. Yes, when Jesus was on the cross, if you will remember, they offered Him wine mixed with myrrh. And so it had medical benefit, and yet the main purpose for myrrh was seen as a fragrant spice to wrap the deceased in to keep the smell down as the body would decompose. You will recall that when Jesus died, Nicodemus brought spices to wrap the body of Jesus in. And in John 19, we get a partial list in verse 39 of those, uh, of those spices. Nicodemus, who had first come to him by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. The myrrh was one of those spices that Nicodemus brought in order to embalm, in a sense, the body of Jesus. When the Magi brought baby Jesus, a gift of myrrh, they were prophetically declaring that Jesus had been born for a purpose. And that purpose is not only to be the King of kings and Lord of lords, not only is it to be a high priest, the one who stands in the gap between us and God, but that He would be the sacrifice for mankind. Yet ultimately, that is the fullness of the message of the cross. That Jesus came to be offered as a sacrifice that God could give us His very best for all of eternity. And the message of the myrrh is that we should celebrate God's best and that we have a responsibility to be faithful, but not just faithful, faithful unto death. And we will receive the crown of life. The gift of life that is given to us was death of God's one and only, only begotten Son. And then beyond the physical gifts that we might give to God, our money, our worship, our dedication, there are spiritual gifts that we give as well. In Romans 12, beginning in verse 1, we again read, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. The gift of a life devoted to God's glorification or worship is what we ought to be doing. 
the gift of a life that reflects His glory, living and holy sacrifices, the gift of a life that submits to His instruction is the transformation from the old life to the new life. Certainly each of these gifts given to the baby Jesus were strange and peculiar. What about the gifts that we give back to Christ ourselves? How would we define the gifts that we give? What is the gift that you and I will give to Jesus today? I hope that it will be the gift of our time, our love, and our very lives to Him who gave all for you and for me. The metric of love is sacrifice. If, if, if we want to define and pinpoint love, then the way we do that is through sacrifice. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we read this. Now brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God, which has been given in the churches of Macedonia, that in a great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints. And this, not as we had expected, but they gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of of God. And so this morning, God has given us many great gifts, some of them physical, others of them spiritual. And the question is, have you accepted the spiritual gift of God, His loving sacrifice on the cross for you? And if not, then I would encourage you this morning to make that decision. Repent of sin, confess Jesus as the Christ, and have your sins washed away through baptism. And if, as a Christian, you've not been giving to God as you ought to give, living for God as you ought to be living, then we would be happy to pray with you and for you. If you're subject to the Lord's invitation this morning, Jesus invites you, and we stand to to encourage you. I wonder far away.
formed and they have met several times and one of the things on the agenda for our congregational meeting at the conclusion of our worship today uh, is to hopefully adopt a budget for uh, fiscal year 2024 and I have been asked to share with the congregation uh, that budget and, and what we are going to need in order to fulfill uh, our commitments for uh, 2024. So you'll see four columns there. One of them is the budgetary item. The second one is our 2023 budget. The third is the 2024 budget. And then the last, any notes that are on there. So you're going to see that uh, benevolence remains the same. You will see that building and grounds and building repairs have been combined into a single category. You're going to see that the education budget remains the same. Uh, the only category that is going up in 2024 is insurance. We don't have a lot that we can do about that. Uh, several factors are in play with that, uh, mainly where we are located. Uh, it's very hard, believe it or not, for us to get underwritten uh, based on our location primarily. Uh, but with the increased storm activity and damage over the recent years, uh, this area has become Tornado Alley. That has resulted in everyone's uh, insurance premiums having increased. So not a lot that we can do about that category there. Uh, ladies' ministry, uh, we haven't had a ladies' day or things of that nature uh, since pre-pandemic, so that category is going away in 2024. Uh, ministerial support, uh, that is for our song leaders uh, that come in. Uh, miscellaneous is uh, disappearing in 2024. Um, sometimes there are items that have to be purchased that don't really fit into a category, but the decision was made to uh, make sure that they do go in a specific category. Uh, the Burlington Church of Christ has requested that we cease funding them. They have been doing well in recent years and received some local support. And so that is the reason for that reduction there. Uh, the multi-purpose building budget is going away. Um, just like we signed up to bring chili or crackers or whatever else uh, when our supplies in the multi-purpose building are deplenished we will have a sign-up sheet for those things uh, as well so for those that may not enjoy cooking or uh, may not have the ability to cook they will still be able to uh, participate in those activities that we will have um, office expenses remaining the same our floral budget is being reduced a little bit uh, Two reasons for that, fewer people. Secondly, in a post-pandemic world, believe it or not, some hospitals do not allow deliveries from the outside at this point. Uh, that has become an increasing problem for me. Uh, special services uh, is uh, going away. The um, uh, decision was made for our fellowship meals that we have to be uh, a true potluck style. If you may remember in recent years, the church would provide the entrees and then uh, our families would provide the sides. Uh, the decision was made in one of the congregational meetings to go back to a more uh, traditional uh, style or, or way of doing things. Uh, staff expenses adjustment there, subscriptions, those are things like the quarterly um, devotional, daily devotional guide things of that nature. Uh, utilities, that's staying the same. We did not spend all of our worship budget this year, um, unless something really bizarre happens in the month of December. So we have made an adjustment there, and then our youth activities budget remains the same from 2023 to 2024. Now, with all of those adjustments, that brings our gross budget required for 2024 to be 133,000 and change. Most of you are aware of this, some of you may not be, but we have entered into a partnership with Lantern Lane Farms up the road a little bit. Lantern Lane Farms is a uh, faith-based nonprofit counseling service. Uh, if y'all did not know this, and y'all know that I don't have a tendency to uh, exaggerate when I'm talking seriously about something, uh, we have a mental health crisis in this country 
And there are several counseling companies that I'm aware of that have as much as a six month waiting list uh, just to be able to see people. And so we have been able to partner with Lantern Lane Farms. They are basically leasing several classrooms in the old building classroom wing. And in exchange for that, they are making that building revenue neutral for us. Uh, they are covering, they, they are paying rent, they are also paying for all the utilities on that building. So the chapel and education wing is a revenue neutral building for us now that we have entered into this partnership and also enabling those who uh, are struggling with mental health issues to be able to get that, the help that they need sooner. And so uh, I think this is a wonderful, uh, mutually beneficial relationship that we have. It is estimated between rent and utilities that that will be uh, $9,600 on the year, which brings our net budget total to $124,000 and change, which requires a weekly contribution of $2,386.85. Now, even with all of that trimming, that means that we are still going to be running a deficit if we spend every penny in every single category. Um, in order for us to balance this budget uh, with an average attendance of 37, that would mean that each individual would need to contribute an additional $4 a week uh, in order for that budget to be balanced. So, um, that is a review of the 2024 budget in our meeting that we're going to have at the conclusion of worship. Uh, that is going to be discussed, voted on, and, and hopefully adopted. If you have any more questions or uh, detailed questions about the budget, I would encourage you to stay for this meeting and, and we will try to answer those questions. Thank you for your attention uh, to that. Um, I'll once again turn the service back over to Brian. Once again, thank you for coming out and working with us today. Uh, our closing talk song today will be Oh They Tell Me of a Home. If you can stand with me, we will sing this last song before we have our opening uh, closing prayer if there are no other announcements to be made this time. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far